forgiven if I speak them out. I won't lie to you, God, if there is a heaven. I really hope I get there, cause for real it sounds like heaven. Reading past the lines, I just let go. Searching for profits, my faith it is paper thin. So many questions in my mind, they replay like an echo. All right, this explains a lot. Hello friends, welcome to Look and Live. You here with Pastor James Devalon, and this is another reaction video. Okay, the title of this one is Dear God by Ran. Okay, friends, thank you so much for re requesting this one here. We're gonna take a listen to this for the first time. I think this is gonna give me a good perspective about his spiritual condition as well, where he is on that spiritual journey. Um, Hello. Yeah. Without further ado, let us now get into the heart of the message. Like and subscribe to the page. Link to the original video is in the description below. All right, friends, let's get to it. Hello. Uh, it's Ren. I don't really know how to start this letter. Oh, fuck it. <clears throat> Is this life really what it seems? Cause lately I've been in this place between awake and dreams I know I only reach out to you when I'm feeling blue I promise I'm not using you, I'm just confused I've got some questions I would like some answers to Like is there meaning to this state of short existence? My existential thoughts, you'll hope there are cause I'm resistant To thinking that there won't be something better in the distance And God, is there an afterlife where pain is non-existent? If you're up there God, do you sit upon a throne? Or are you a humble soul wearing sandals and tattered clothes? Do you mingle with the people like an equal then on some Days, just kick back and chill and put your feet up Did I really choose this life that I'm living now? Will my sins be forgiven if I speak them out? I won't lie to you God if there is a heaven I really hope I get there cause for real it sounds like heaven Reading past the lines Alright <clears throat> um, Good questions um, I, think, I think it's bad when we stop asking questions I think whenever questions are on the table, and it's also an open heart to find out more about God or spirituality, you are on a journey to discover um, either truth or it won't be long before God shows himself to you in a way that is very personal and real. So the first thing I notice these are some very honest questions. He's not really attacking God. I've listened to many videos. Um, Dear God was a good one as well, where Dax did a great job questioning a number of things. Um, but if you notice, people who questions God, who question these, we ask, who ask these type of questions, oftentimes they will find out the truth for themselves or either God will lead them to the truth. Or I've also seen, uh, what's his name, Hobson. He did one, Hobson, the Ill Mind 7, I think. Ill Mind 7 of Hobson. <laughs> that was seriously strong, too. <laughs> but uh, these are not bad things in and of themselves. And I think if people would ask more questions and stuff, and also have an open heart to find out the truth, I'm sure God will reveal himself to them. I just let go. Searching for profits, my faith it is paper thin So many questions in my mind They replay like an echo They never stop my messiah is porcelain Dear God, why do people kill each other in your name? Is it really what you want or have we lost our way? Cause it seems like religion can cause division Or people living in prisons of moral values they're given what is right and what is wrong? Am I a sinner if I don't comply with everything that Moses said or is that dumb? And why do people disguise hatred in your name? Homophobia, a history of violent wars and causing pain. High priests in the tower stacking riches. Women burnt at the stakes called witches. In the name of God, Allah, Zeus, Jesus. People claiming lives justified by your allegiance. I think it's more complex than good versus evil. I think that there's both darkness and light inside people. Through different eyes, a man called a terrorist could be a freedom fighter if he's fighting for the side you're with. Reading past the lines, I just let go. Wow. Man, I, I gotta tell you. The thing is, if you're looking for God through the lens of religions only, 
you will be bitterly disappointed. I am so glad I did not go that route. Actually, I started that route and I realized this was a confusing route. It will leave you even more mad in your search for truth than anything because some of the most ugliest stuff ever been done in history were done by religious people. Some of the most diabolical, inhumane, and considerate behaviors were done by religious people. So the question you now are gonna ask is, what's wrong with the God in which they claim to believe in? Well, it depends which religion it is, first of all. And secondly, even if it is Christianity, there's a lot of people who talk about God, who do not actually believe in God. There's a lot of misconception, misinterpretation, and there's a lot of narcissistic on the throne as well that is oftentimes looked at as Christians and what it is not. And I will go as far to say, even the devil goes to church. You know that, right? Anyway, let's keep going. He's on fire. Reading past the line. I just let go. Searching for profits. My faith it is paper thin. So many questions in my mind. They replay like an echo. They never stop my messiah is porcelain So is it ignorant to claim that we know what you want? And if I fast for the Sabbath, is that what you want? Or is tradition just super... What was that question again? You know what you want. And if I fast... If I fast for the Sabbath, is that what you want? Um, by the way, the true biblical Sabbath is... Um, it really means rest. It really falls on Saturday. Um... Not Sunday. Sunday is not the Sabbath. But plus, this idea of fasting on the Sabbath, it is something um, somewhere after the early church in the 6th century. A lot of people were doing this, and they actually made the biblical Sabbath a burden instead of a joy. So what they, what they used to do historically, they used to fast on the Sabbath, which was Saturday, and they used to feast on Sunday. And little by little, Sunday became more important. And with Constantine in 31 AD, he ended up passing a law, making Sunday rest the law of the land for the Romans. And it's because he supposed it became a Christian. And little by little, Sunday was exalted above the Sabbath. It's too historical fact. You can look it up. It's all on Google and so on. I am a Sabbath keeper. Uh, I keep the biblical Sabbath, uh, just like the Jews do. But um, but I'm a Christian, though. We don't, we're not Jewish. Um, but the Sabbath was not made for fasting. <laughs> uh, you can fast if you want, but it's not. It's a, it's a day of joy and feasting. We try to do that at home. Uh, we do things differently. Even the videos that I record on the Sabbath are different. Um, we go worship and we also do ministry, visit the sick, and um, also go, you know, and try to share the gospel with others. And we do a lot of family things as well, and go out in nature. We do a number of things and study the Bible together. I try to spend quality time with my wife and my children during the Sabbath, so we spend we spend time in prayer. Sometimes we take physical rest as well. There are various things you can do on the Sabbath. It makes it be a joy. Anything that draws you closer to Christ is a it's a blessing on the Sabbath. I've had studies on this channel about the meaning of the Sabbath. But one thing for certain is that the biblical seventh-day Sabbath is not a day for fasting. Okay, it's not a day for fasting. You can do that on any other day, but, uh, but you do not want to turn the Sabbath off with just fasting. <laughs> Ask for the Sabbath, is that what you want? Or is tradition just superstition, religion, the human vision just crafted out of people's ambition? Mm, exactly. Let me hear that again. Or is tradition just superstition, religion, the human vision just crafted out of people's ambition list? <laughs> it is nice. Exactly. I know I'm pausing in the middle of the line here. 
but he is hating all the spots for me. And I'm telling you, tradition, superstitions, and man-made religions, and commitments of man instead of commitments of God. I was confusing the masses. And oftentimes we blame God, we blame religion, but really what's happening is that men are um, using their own interpretation, their, mo- their own misconception, their own paganistic ideologies, and they want to mix it with the word of God. And then we end up with a twisted version of religion and even a, a corrupt version of Christianity. And then we call that Christians. And then when people try that stuff, it tasted so it tastes so ugly and so nasty that it's a major turn off and we just get mad at the God of the Bible altogether while we've been uh, lied to, being poisoned by false doctrines and ideologies. And uh, unfortunately, very few people know how to discern truth from error. And as a result, now it becomes difficult to know what truth is. Uh, but I'll tell you one thing, though, if you've, this morning I woke up, took the time to do some of this. I'm reading Matthew 13 right now, going through the parables of Jesus about the kingdom of heaven is like a grain of mustard seed. The kingdom of heaven is like a, a woman, you know, um, hiding uh, in a meal, different things like that, the, the, the wheat and the tares. So you better off reading the Bible and then you find a religion according to the truth that God reveals to you from the word. You do not want to go the other way around, going to the religion and then trying to line up with scripture. You find scripture, you take Bible study based on what God reveals to you, and then you find a church that falls in line with scripture. And it's so it's not difficult to do at all. Actually, it becomes the most easiest thing You can cut out a lot of the traditional stuff and paganistic stuff. And there's a lot of stuff that claim to be Christian today that are not Christians at all. I just want to let you know that. Or is tradition just superstition, religion, the human vision just crafted out of people's ambition? Listen, I knew a girl that lost a baby before it was born. What's the purpose of that, God? What is it for? Why did my best friends die before I hit 25? Is it because there is something better in the afterlife? God, I've been feeling suicidal lately. Mental health is worsening. It feels like it might break me. If you're watching, you know that I've been strong. But God, how much longer do I have to hold on? Please just give me some solace. So that I know you've got my back. Please just give me some relief. God, is that too much to ask? These are some very honest questions, man. And I have to say, I I know I don't have all the answers. Um, we had to do a funeral at our church. I had to officiate that funeral. You know, this baby was just two months, man. And he just couldn't breathe on his own. And They tried so hard to save his life, but he didn't make it. Uh, that was that was hard because um, you saw that little, that little, little basket we had and little thing, man. It was just like, oh, gosh. It's like, what do you tell a mother? Um... <laughs> like what 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 gospel do you preach to to a mother about something like this? Like I Okay, I I'm telling you it's it's a tough place to be even as a as a as a Bible believing Christian. There are some things that I, I see in the world that I'm like, Lord Jesus, you know. I don't know. God knows, but we don't know. But at the same time, these are not reasons for you not to believe. And I think some people, when they like take an issue with God because they don't have their answers, that doesn't solve anything, man. I mean, you, you're you allowed to feel some type of way about it, but, but you lose by getting mad and upset with God because you don't have all your answers. Even if you did, would you, would you, would you believe? <laughs> you know, so there's more than enough I think God has already answered through the scripture if we want to believe. You know, the thing is there's a real sane and problem and real issues in the world that is plaguing the human race. And I don't think there isn't any level of spiritual understanding to make sense of it all. I don't think we're ever going to get to understand the depths of it. Like where did evil really come from? How did Lucifer fall from heaven? Like, all of that. Where did, how did pride get into his heart? These are serious questions, you know. Um, 
you know, why do good things happen to bad people? Why do bad things happen to all people? Why do good things happen to uh, any of us? It's like, yeah, not bad questions at all. But the thing is, you may not have a hundred percent correct answers for them. This doesn't necessarily mean God isn't love, God isn't good, God isn't true. This doesn't necessarily mean God doesn't. He's not the creator of the world. He's not watching over you. This doesn't mean God didn't send his son to die for you. So while we're waiting for answers, God has already spoken in so many different ways to encourage the heart. And he's given us so many reasons to believe no matter what. So I find more reasons to believe in God than reasons not to believe. Um, I still have my doubts and questions, but he makes sense of them over time. And there are things that I will never understand but my faith in him remains the same because I realize that he is working out his purpose. He's in charge. He knows what is best. Rand did an excellent job with this one, asking some very solid and important questions. And I think we need to do more of that. Um, when questions are being asked in this manner, there seems to be an open heart and a desire to discover truth. And God can work with that. And I will say, if you have questions, ask questions. If you're not sure, just ask God, what are some things you will have him to tell you? And just be very honest and open about it. And make sure you have an open heart because the answers might not be exactly what you wanted to hear. But sometimes that's exactly what the truth is. Um, for example, in Jeremiah 33, verse 3, the Bible says, Call unto me, and I will answer thee, and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. So God invites you to call, and he's willing to answer. He's willing to show you things that you don't, you don't know about. So there are some things you just don't know about, and God is saying, I'm willing to share those things with you. A lot of the questions that Rand was asking in the song are already answered in the Bible. They're all answered in the Bible. Many of them, well over 80% of what he was asking were answered in the Bible. I, at least I know them to be found in the Bible. So that means... For some of us, we just need to go read the Bible, <laughs> literally. Read the Bible with an open heart with the desire to believe what it says, and you will find a lot of your answers. Um, the second thing I would like to say is that God loves you with an everlasting love. This is the verse that really transforms my life. I went to church in 2010 uh, with a heavy heart somewhere in the month of October. Um, I didn't know what I was doing. All I know, I needed to go to church and change my life around, and I did. And when I got in there, the pastor was preaching, and he quoted this verse, and my life was never the same ever, ever since. So he quoted this verse. He said, The Lord hath appealed of old unto me, saying, I have loved thee with an everlasting love. Therefore, with loving kindness have I drawn thee. I, I didn't get all the answers right away, but I did get the love. I didn't see and have all the understanding that I needed to have in order for me to believe, but I did feel his love. All of my doubts didn't fade away. As a matter of fact, my struggle with sin continued. However, the love of God literally wrapped me. He wrapped me with his love that day, and I knew that there was something. There was something very special with Jesus that nothing else and no one else had. And that's what really transformed my life. The rest of the time, I wrestled with the questions. I wrestled with things I didn't know, but... Um, when I knew that God loved me with a love that was everlasting, I said I had the option to accept that love and be loved by him and believe what he did on that cross of Calvary through his son Jesus Christ was for me. The price that was paid was for my sins, and I chose to believe that. The day that I did, I was free.